Do you ever feel down because you're not getting the kind of revelation you used to? Do you ever feel like you're maybe not as close spiritually to God as you were or that you want to be? Well, here's a tip. Not getting revelation is an invitation. If you're not getting what you used to have, maybe it was enough for what you used to need. And now, where you need to be now is deeper. If you're not getting revelation, don't get depressed, don't get down, don't get out. See that as an invitation to go further in yourself, to go further with your spiritual practices, with fasting, with praying, with worship, with reading, with learning. If you don't feel the same as you were, then maybe you got used to the temperature of the water. Maybe your spirit got used to that level. So you're not going to feel necessarily always that same excitement, that same feeling, that same tingle or whatever. But what do you do when the bath water gets warm? You add some hot water to it. What happens if the room gets too warm? You pump up the air conditioning. It's up to you to lean in. God has his promises. God has his friendship. He has his love. He has his revelation available and all these things. So if you're sitting there and you're ever thinking, man, I haven't had this revelation. What do I need to do? Well, guess what? Don't keep doing the same thing. That's for sure. So lean in. Look at At the level that you are, which is probably an awesome level, and there's higher and bigger and deeper and better levels always. And by that, I just mean the normal progress of human and spiritual growth into our eternal self. And if we're on this trajectory, if you know Christ, if you're in his kingdom, if you're in that covenant, if you received his spirit, then you're just going to get closer and closer and closer as you go. You're going to know more and more and more about God and yourself and your destiny as you go. So you won't want the same stuff. In fact, if you have the same thing for like 30 years straight, then you probably aren't moving up. So you got to move up. Sometimes it means to learn more. Sometimes it might mean a place where now you go to this other place to learn something different. Maybe there's teachers that are saying something a little bit different because where you've been, you got it. If you're digging at the same level and you've picked up all the beautiful silver and you picked up all the little cool looking garnet and lapis lazuli and all these things there, then if you want to get the gold, you might have to go a little bit deeper. It's obvious, right? But sometimes we get this little trapping or we think that there's something wrong with God or something wrong with ourselves. All we are is being invited to something deeper and more. For you with lots of spiritual awesome experiences, you might need to gain and learn some more knowledge by listening to teachers, stuff that seems boring. And for you guys who love the teachers and the scholarly stuff, you might need to listen to some of these prophets and some of these people that are kind of out there in space because they got something for you and the other ones have something for the other ones. This is how God works it out. This is why the fivefold is so amazing. This is why the worldwide church, all the denominations and the groups that, that follow Christ but disagree, God can use them all and speak through them all. And it's up to me and you to know what we know is right and follow that. And it's not to judge them, but it'd be to pray for them or help them or receive the thing that they have. There's awesome churches that don't have the spirit power, but they have this appreciation for church tradition and this honor of God. Let's take that. Right? There's other places that are really into the Bible, but they're also kind of grumpy and they don't like the Holy Spirit. Well, let's take some of that stuff they got from the Bible. It's like all of this thing, the whole body of Christ unified is the body. He's not divided up as much as we want to, as much as we think we should, as much as we think pointing fingers is the right thing to do. What we need to do is join hands because we're the body. Here's the thing. When you need to go that extra step, if you feel that it's slow, you haven't had dreams lately, you haven't been hearing God as much, you're reading the Bible and it seems dead and dry, well, do something new and different. Do that fast. Read longer. Pray longer. Now look at, and I'm not saying a work here because prayer is not, I'm going to sit here and repeat these things over and over and over like a work. No, go farther. If you normally can pray for 10 minutes, say, you know what? I'm going to do 20 and I'm going to try to do 20. If you don't really meditate and just chill out with God 
And you're, you know, because your mind goes too fast, maybe, or maybe you're kind of busy or you get nervous. Be like, focus in and say, okay, I'm going to find this music that's relaxing. And I'm going to just sit before God, just think about him and let his love pour over me. It's hard, guys, but everything new is hard. Every next step is hard because it's different. When you dig deeper into the soil, it's not going to be as light as the soil you've been at. And so this is the thing. You show how much you really want it by your effort. And I think a lot of stuff, salvation, relationship with God, and all these things that are just available are available for anyone who believes. Because God knows there's different people who will go to different lengths for what they want. Remember, a lot are called and few are chosen. What's the difference with the chosen? What's the difference? They went for it. If everyone is with this election of grace from Romans 11, what's who are the elect? The ones who enter into that election of grace. See, remember these verses where God's talking about, I looked all around and I was just looking for somebody who would stand up. Looking all around, looking for somebody who would stand in the gap for these people. Looking to who I could prove myself strong. There's a lot of people that God called and he wanted to prove himself strong through. But they failed. They missed it. The devil got them. They got them. Whatever it was, they didn't do it. Some people talk about, oh, if someone leaves their mantle behind, then maybe God will give that mantle to somebody else. I don't care if it's Mantle. I don't care if it's Willie Mays, Babe Ruth, any of the baseball players. The point is, is if God has stuff to be done and you want to join him in it, the only thing that is keeping us from that place is us if we're not willing to go the extra mile, to take the extra step, to lean in a little bit more. Lean into it. And look, at here's the thing. It's not going to be what feels normal, and it's not going to be what you would naturally do because you like it. Because it's been proven already that you already have done the things that you liked, and you already do the things that are comfortable, and that got you to that level, and that's amazing. But the next level might be discomfort in some way. It might be a period of action. It might be a time where you've been just chilling out, and then you've got this revelation, and you heard this stuff, but now it's time for you to do something with what you've learned. And God's like, I already gave you a ton of stuff. Are you doing anything with what I gave you? So then the leaning in would be to doing the thing that hasn't been necessarily as comfortable because you've been learning. Or if you've been doing for a while, and if you've been going, and if you've been rocking it, then it might be this time for the recharge. It might be the reconnect. It might be you've done, you went this far. Here's these results. Now we got this new assignment. And some of you guys have noticed this too. You start out. You get this revelation for healing going. You go out. And when it starts happening, you get these awesome bursts, these awesome testimonies, these awesome things that happen. Boom. And then it seems like it kind of wanes and kind of slows down a little bit. It's almost like God's giving a chance to be like, hey, look, here's what's possible. Here's some of the awesome stuff. Now lean on in and let me build you up while I prepare those for whom you can build. And that might be what's going on. But either way, the idea is Doing the same kind of thing is not going to get you different results if you feel like you're in this place where you haven't had as much revelation, haven't had as much dream, haven't had as much like personal insight stuff in the way that you like. And what I'm here to tell you is that it's for you. It's there. God wants you to have it because it's all about the relationship with him. That's it. And how do you have a better relationship? How do you grow in relationship? How do you get closer if it's getting closer with God, it's time spent and there's no replacement for it. None. So know this, a lack of revelation is an invitation to lean into new and different things in a new and different way. Because what it does is changes you. It changes how you perceive things. It changes where your heart is. And from that different perspective, you could see a different part of God and a new part of him might be revealing himself to you. And check this out. If you're not moving up, if you're not changing your theology based on new things you've learned, if you believed and thought the same thing for 30 years, then you are lagging behind. No, I don't mean the big obvious stuff, right? We're not saying, oh, that there's no Jesus' cross and nothing like that. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of stuff that the people who are most into learning and education spend their entire lives learning one sliver of time, one book 
right? One language of one book of one Bible author. They spend their whole life and they can't even get all this stuff. And if you think that then you just sit in there reading like, you know, a couple Facebook posts about something and listening to some messages and buying that book once in a while that just tells miracle stories, that that's the same kind of thing. No way. There's more. And the more level is up to you. It's not up to God. He's not going to make you read a book. He's not going to open up the Bible and take your eyes and do that. He doesn't do that because the freedom is part of the relationship. You don't have love without the freedom. And then when you use your freedom and your free time and your free focus to show that you love him and love what he made you to be and loved how he put you into spirit form into this physical body on this earth with a short amount of time, you're showing him something. Is it earning? No, but it shows you care. It's that whole idea. Show me your works by your faith. People are like, oh, well, now that's a works thing, like the law. No, it's saying, dude, if you have faith, he's going to know it. Other people are going to know it. And it's the people who just talk it and other people don't know. That's who they're addressing. If that's not a salvation message here, right? He's not talking salvation. It's so wild. We take all these verses that are saying one thing and the author is saying one thing. And then we say, oh, well, now it's about salvation. So that's all because they think the Christian life can only be salvation because churches at those times, that's all they had. They didn't know. They didn't know of this expectation of Holy Spirit power. When those doctrines came, they weren't, they didn't have the possibility of, oh, I'll receive the Holy Spirit. Now I'll be healing people and praying in tongues and prophesying. They didn't have that. But we took in some of these ideas and we still have them. And then it keeps us in this thing. If we're looking at that being like, oh my gosh, yeah, no, I don't want to do works for salvation. And then you can't have salvation without works. And you muddy that whole thing up. When the point is this, your faith, real faith, knowing God, God in you, your spiritual walk must result in outward awesome things. And it doesn't mean, oh, doing good, uh, giving money to the poor, though that's true. The same good, awesome, supernatural things that you'll do for existence are the things in mind. What's a good work? I'm giving money to this poor person. That's amazing. And thanks for your donations, guys. But what's also a good work? Oh, I'm going to prophesy over this person. God's going to show me his heart and mind for them so that they can go on their trajectory empowered by this spiritual message and this grace because he gave me the spirit. Yeah, that's very good work. And there's some things that we can see the richness of as far as our destiny, which is in addition to normal good things. Like, remember with the idea of the oil on Jesus' feet? And then old Judas, old jerky Judas, he's like, hey, that could have been used money. And Jesus is like, dude, you always have the poor with you, but this is something special. And it's the same way, Christian. You'll always have the poor to give. You'll always have the nice word to be polite. You'll always have that. But it's up to you. And God wants to bring it. God wants to connect. God wants to make this happen with you where your good works are greater works. They're supernatural, empowered works. It could be small. It could be big. But you're not limited to just what's in your wallet. And you're not limited to just the people that you see and who you could help. You are unlimited when it's God's unlimited spiritual power through you. And that drive, that knowledge, the heart to do that, the heart to be yourself to the fullest degree for God is what happens when you answer the invitation that is given when you spend time without revelation. I love you and the Lord loves you. We'll see you next time. And be sure to check out Revelation.com. I have links to the Patreon site, which is a website that allows you to give recurring donations and also receive these extra bonus videos, as well as buy some of my cool, fashionable jewelry to help support the channel and support what we're doing here. Come on by and check out the practice of the presence of God, Reverend Elation Translation. It's hard to read some 400-year-old book just because language changes, but now it's in your language. So thank you so much. Come on by. Also, the YouTube channel here now has memberships where you can help out the channel. And there's special videos that you can watch and see. I appreciate you. I want to keep doing this. I want to keep doing this for you on this journey to experience all that God has and experience this tangible Christian life that isn't just ideas and it's not just thoughts, but it's played out in our walk. I love you and the Lord loves you. 
come on by the website, say hi in the comments, send me an email. If I don't answer back, email again. I will always answer a question. I will always do a message. And if not, there's a problem. So make sure to write. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Amen.